But in Matthew chapter 24, we'll begin reading with verse 3. Matthew 24 and verse 3. And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us three things. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, famines pestilences, earthquakes, diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, they shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and they shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People will quit serving the Lord, basically, is what it's saying. Let's hold off on that last couple of verses there a moment. We'll come back to those in a little bit. But this Thursday is a time we've set aside each year to honor our veterans. And they deserve honor. Uh, the more, longer I live, the more I appreciate veterans and what they've done for our freedom. When I came uh, draft age myself, when at, in those days they were drafting about everybody. If I hadn't been in college, I would have had to go. Uh, and a lot of people accused us of going to school to keep them going to the Army. And they might have been partly right, but I didn't want to uh, leave uh, things and go somewhere else where I really didn't want to be. But that's what soldiers agree to do. But the question of what a veteran is, it actually uh, pertains to military service. Anybody that served in, in service is a veteran. They're entitled to certain rights, which I don't begrudge at all. They have it coming. Been men of honor who have pledged to lay down their lives for their country, even to give their life, if, if it comes to it, for our country. Foucault says a lot. A man willing to sign a piece of paper saying, I'm willing to die or fight for my country or from my flag. And folk, I tell you, I, I don't say much about it. Probably not enough. But these people that uh, burn our flag and whatever, and it will not rise to the Pledge of Allegiance, or do not honor our flag, they don't deserve to be here. They don't deserve the what we enjoy. If they're not willing to pay honor a homage to our flag. But I said men have pledged their life. Look at your last verse on, on, verses on the, the your paper there, the verse 12 and 13. Our Lord said, this is my commandment. This is my commandment. That ye love one another as I have loved you. 
Then he sums it up. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And folks, that's what a soldier does. He lays his life on the line that we might have a better place to live. But in our text that I just read, Jesus tells us that there shall be wars. Verse 6 says, you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. And folk, when we trace back the history of wars, we go a long way back, don't we? We go back to the Garden of Eden. That was two little brothers. Playmates, the only two boys there were. Cain and Abel. And could you believe, even though they were blood kin of the same family, that Cain rose up and killed his brother Abel. Because of the offering that was made to God and God honored Abel's offering because he's saying to uh, God thank you for what you're going to do and while Cain said look what I did what I raised in the garden so war began a long time ago uh, the threat of war Is always present, the threat. But as we trace man's history, it's been that way. And you look, and I, I've lived, the Lord blessed me with a long life. And I've seen a bunch of wars happen in my lifetime. And I saw some of the heartache and whatever that was caused because of the war. Much grief has followed each of these wars. Families have been divided with the soldiers gone to battle. Folk, you don't realize if you do a little study about war. How would you like to go to five, six thousand miles away, away from your family, leave them at the mercy of the world? And you're gone because you've pledged to fight for your country. It has sometimes awful effect on families. They're divided because of the soldiers gone to battle. I'll share this with you. I was just a kid of a boy when World War II was over. But I remember well of them talking about that we had a prison camp not far from our house. And they had German soldiers that they had captured that were there as prisoners. And I hear the adults talking about the horrors of the war. Matter of fact, the Lord gave us a scripture. If you would, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 5. This is the law that God laid down for soldiers or for people, period. Deuteronomy 24 and verse 5. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife which he hath taken. 
the law was that God gave if a man got married, he was to stay with his wife one year before he had to go to war. Men that got married, and a lot of them did, a lot of couples did, and they left their wives here. They didn't know what their wives were doing while they were gone. They had a little help. Y'all ever heard of Tokyo Rose? In World War II. Tokyo Rose, and they tried her later. She served eight years in prison here in the United States. But she taunted those soldiers by radio and by any way that she could be heard. And folk back in those days, there wasn't such a thing as a TV. And the guys listened to the radio. But Tokyo Rose would come on the radio and taunt those soldiers saying, hey buddy, your wife's out having a good time with somebody else while you're gone. They knew the psychological effect they had that that had. Nobody could fight a war thinking their wife had been unfaithful while they're over serving their country. Y'all have heard that story before about Tokyo Rose? Read up on it. Following that, the Vietnam War, they had one called Hanoi Hanna, who did virtually the same thing. She taunted those soldiers, made them wonder what their wife was doing, trying to make them unfit to fight a battle that they were supposed to be fighting. Folks, there was a lot of horrors that happened because the soldier was gone to the army. He could do nothing about it. Folks, that's a price to pay. Brother Bobby can tell you about being in old foxholes and not knowing if he's going to get out of there or not. And he got shot up a couple of times with a couple of purple hearts. But he paid the price simply by putting his name on the line that I'm going to fight for my country until I die or if I have to die. Many never came back from the war. They've got cemeteries of American soldiers over in other countries where they, they buried them where they died at. But a lot of people suffered and died for the price of freedom. And many suffered past tense and suffering present tense with PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome. And let's analyze that just a moment. Soldiers had to be taught to kill. They were taught literally to kill. They took those young men, especially, they'd have to get those young guys like Brother Bobby wasn't quite 17 when he went into service. They liked to get those guys because they knew that they were a little more gullible. They took more chances. But they teach them how to kill someone. And then they say, well, it's time to go home, boys. You want to forget all this stuff we taught you over these years. You don't want to kill anybody anymore. But the problem is, a lot of them still wanted to kill other people because that's what they had been grounded into them. I 
How are they untaught? You thought about that a moment? And occasionally we'll have a serial killer. I'm not trying to justify them, but they have been affected by PTSD. Look at how many of them were former service guys. And they go, we use the expression, they go crazy and they kill other people. And virtually that's what happens. But Jesus tells us that the end of wars is not yet in verse 6. And I want to tell you this morning, many of us may yet be called upon to pay the ultimate at verse 9 if you look back. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Folk, I can tell you this much right now. If you take a stand for the truth, you're going to run into opposition. Amen. It's there. It's not a matter of maybe. But you can't stand on both sides of the fence at the same time, can you? You've got to get on one side or the other. These special interest groups have grown and multiplied that now they won't want to make it an offense for you to stand for the truth. And you will be delivered up, the Lord said, before it's all said and done. Others have stood for the truth in uh, our Lord's day, John the Baptist. The one that began the church by baptizing those that came down to the River Jordan. You remember what happened to John the Baptist? He condemned Herod's move, didn't he? And this lady asked for his head. And Herod had John the Baptist's head cut off. But that's not the end of the story. You read a little further down, you find that the worms ate Herod. I don't care whether you're king or whatever, but you don't violate God's laws without it costing you. James, the brother of John, was beheaded. For Christ. The apostle Peter. When they took him and was about to crucify him. He said I don't deserve. To die like my Lord did. So they crucified him upside down. But he stood for the truth. And they took his life. They couldn't touch his soul though. <laughs> That eternal part that God made in his own image was transferred to a new body. But what we need to honor our heroes. We need to thank them for the pledge that they took and willing to lay their life on the line. Moreover, let them know that their service was not in vain. That this country is still worth fighting for. Now, we still got plenty of enemies, and they seem to be multiplying. But I call your attention to one, one last time to the last verse on your paper. Y'all all know it, but I want us to remember it. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Oh, that's exactly what our Lord did. He said himself, I lay my life down. They don't take it from me. I've got power to lay it down. I've got power to take it up again.
So he set the example, didn't he? When he died in our place. 